Hi folks, welcome back. So as you might know, OpenAI earlier in 2025 launched this notion of apps in ChatGPT. And at launch time, they had a very small set of hand curated apps with that setup. But just a couple of weeks ago, they have made this essentially GA where anyone can now create and submit apps to basically what is a new app store. So I was playing with their APIs and apps SDK just to get familiar with it. And I wanted to make a quick, simple end to end tutorial to show how one would go about building and testing and developing a chat GPT app and how it works end to end. Just some quick conceptual scaffolding to start with. As a prerequisite, you're gonna need to understand MCP or model context protocol because chat GPT apps are basically MCP servers with a few other requirements. So the basic idea is that your app is an MCP server that exposes tools relevant to whatever your app is doing. And as for the UI, it also exposes resources which serve up your UI. So resources are another concept in MCP. And in this case, resources will serve up the HTML UI for your app. And this UI will get rendered in an iframe that is in line in the chat conversation. So you've got to be familiar with MCP, how MCP works and how to build MCP servers. And by now there are tons of decent libraries in most languages, whether it's JavaScript or TypeScript or Python to build MCP servers. All right, so let's get into a concrete hello world kind of example chat GPT app. So I coded up a very simple app that simply shows progress bars for how much time is left in the current day, week, month, or year. And this whole thing is written up in Python. And of course, the logic for this is pretty simple. So if you look at the main logic here, the main tool here is calculate time remaining and it returns a dictionary of all these percentages of time left. And then you can see the main MCP setup over here. I'm listing resources, which is the HTML UI within which these progress bars will get rendered. And I'm also registering this one single MCP tool. It's called get time remaining. It doesn't take any arguments. It simply returns a dictionary of various time left percentages. So this is a very simple MCP server. It exposes one tool and one HTML resource. I'll, le I'll leave links to all these repos in the description, by the way. And here in the web directory, you can see the HTML UI. Now, one important thing to note is that the way ChatGPT apps work is that they inject this new JavaScript API into your app and it's window.openai. And this API is how all the communication between your app and the containing chat GPT chat happens. So for example, the output of the tool goes into this property window.openai.toolOutput. And there's a bunch of other properties and methods that you can invoke on window.openai via which you can pass information back and forth between the chat and your app. And you're going to need that because the chat has context for the app. As we saw, this is just a Python MCP server. So you can run it locally by spinning up the server with Python. So I'm gonna run it on my local machine and now it is serving on port 8000. And you can actually see what kind of tools and resources this MCP server is exposing 
by using the MCP inspector that Anthropic have put out. So let's quickly take a look at that. All right, so I brought up the MCP inspector locally and I'm gonna point it at my local MCP server. And once I do that, you can see how when I list resources, it shows me this time left widget. This is the HTML for the UI that it's supposed to be serving up. And it will also show me tools. So if I say list tools, it shows me my get time remaining tool. And just to see if everything is working as expected in the MCP server, I can actually run the tool and see if the response is what I would expect. So you can check that the response is what you what you expected, which it is in this case. And very importantly, it should have these pointers to your UI resources, which it does. So the MCP inspector lets us do a quick sanity check to make sure that the MCP server for our ChatGPT app is running and giving the correct responses. The next step now is to actually test this out with ChatGPT. And this is where it gets a little bit messy. The first thing we need to do is expose our locally running MCP server to the public web so that ChatGPT can actually reach it. And there are several ways to do it. You basically have to set up a tunnel. Their own docs recommend ngrok, but I prefer CloudFlare-D simply because you can bring up tunnels without having to sign up for anything. So all this does is take your local MCP server running on localhost port 8000 and expose it to the internet. And it tells me this is my public URL. And if I hit that URL with slash MCP at the end, it should give me back this, which is expected because this isn't really an MCP client. I'm just reaching out to it as an HTTP server. You could actually double check that this URL works with MCP inspector. So if I put in my Cloudflare tunnel URL in here and I connect to that, all right, I had to add slash MCP at the end. And we can see that it has all the right resources and tools. So this is running off the Cloudflare tunnel URL. So now we know that the tunnel URL is working correctly. Okay, now let's set up things so that we can actually try this out in ChatGPT. The first thing you have to do is enable developer mode in settings. So this is under apps, advanced settings. You have to turn on developer mode. And then we will go and create an app. So I'll give it a name, time left app. The description is optional. I will give it the URL of the Cloudflare tunnel. And this doesn't have any auth. And I will create this. And now you can see my app show up in the list of enabled apps over here. And I can click through and see some details about when it was connected, what the URL is, and so on. And it looks like everything is okay because it found my tool and it found my template. I will test it out with a chat. I'm telling it explicitly which app to use. I just wanted to directly hit my test app. And in the debug information from ChatGPT, you can see how it called this tool, the request it made, and the response it got. And then here you can see the UI for the app just as we had expected. So that's cool. Our app runs end-to-end. -end. ChatGPT can find it, and it can actually render it inline. But when you're developing an app, you want something that lets you iterate very quickly locally and doesn't always go through 
the real ChatGPT website. Also, by the way, there's one hurdle, which is that in order to enable developer mode in ChatGPT settings, you have to be on one of the paid plans. So you need to be at least on a ChatGPT plus plan. You can't do this kind of debugging on any of their free plans. And in order to do that quick local iteration and testing, I quickly vibe coded a local ChatGPT app tester, which marks out this window.openai API that these apps use. And that lets you run all this completely locally. Now, you do need to set an API key because you are chatting with the thing and testing that the right tool calls are made. It just locally marks out all the OpenAI window API so that the UI for your app can get rendered. So my MCP server is already running on localhost. 48,000. And I'm going to run my app tester against that MCP server. And you can see it's using 4O mini. I have set my API key in an environment variable. That's where it is getting the API key from. And now if I go to localhost 3000, by the way, it found the right tool. So we know that it found my MCP server. But let's go to localhost 3000, which is where this local app tester is running. So there you go. It tells you what the available tools are. And I can test it. How much time left app? All right. So there you go. It found the right tool. It called the tool. And then it rendered the UI for the tool populated with the data that was in the response of the tool which is exactly what you want. And it also prints out some debug info, what the request was and what the response was. So the response gives you back all your structured tool response as well as pointers to your UI resources. And that gets hydrated and rendered locally. And this lets me test and develop and iterate on my app locally without having to go into ChatGPT settings and set up a tunnel and enable developer mode and all that stuff. So I will make all these repos public and link them in the description of this video. So that was a complete end-to-end -end Hello World ChatGPT app that you can bring up on your local machine. You can test it locally, but you can also test it with ChatGPT if you set up the right tunnels. I hope that was helpful. If you like content like this, please like the video, consider subscribing, and I will see you next time.